everybody. Welcome to the webinar today. Um, we're going to be talking about how to drive more revenue with Bing Shopping Campaigns, presented by Bing and Hannapin Marketing. And your presenter today is Richard Park, um, who is a Bing product ads expert, um, and we are very excited to have him. Uh, Richard, hey, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for uh, having me today. I'm very excited to be uh, talking about shopping campaigns, Bing Shopping Campaigns. Great. Tell us uh, a little bit more about yourself. Yeah. Um, so I've been at Microsoft for a little over a year now. Um, prior to that, I was at agency at agencies working on the East Coast. Um, I have a little bit over have over eight years of experience. Um, most of my experience has been around data feeds, comparison shopping engines, um, and shopping campaigns. A um, little bit uh, in affiliate marketing and other channels as well. Uh, like I said, from the East Coast, big uh, big New York fan. So. Go Giants and Yankees. <laughs> that might be a cringe for some people. And then, you know, a few things that I want to share. I mean, the main thing I want to share is that data feeds are really essential to your business. And I really think that data feeds are the future because I think more most of core search down the road, it's going to be based on feeds, you know, whether it's for marketing, display, or just your search. I think feeds will be the way to go. So it's really important that we all, we all get an understanding of how feeds work. And you can also tweet at me at our park data fee. <laughs> yes, you can. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there, Richard. Uh, I was just going to say we're um, really thrilled to have you on the webinar today. Um, except, oh, thank you. you know, talking about shopping campaigns and you being a product ads expert, um, it's going to be really great for our audience. Um, Appreciate it. So before uh, I turn the presentation over to Richard, we just got a couple of housekeeping things. Um, if you want to join the conversation, you can um, tweet. Um, using the hashtag ThinkPPC, um, or use the webinar question box to send us questions. And uh, real quick, why don't you guys uh, say hello to us in the question box, and we'll just make sure that's all working okay. Um, we also have a uh, poll question. Um, so this is real quick. How do you manage your accounts? And let me get this poll started. So, um, are you part of an in-house PPC team? Uh, do you do all the marketing, including PPC? Do you work at an agency, or are you a consultant? Um, so, if you'll just take a couple of moments and uh, fill that out for us real quick so we know who we're talking to today. Um, if you guys want to know who I am, uh, my name is Jamie Newton, and I am the Communications Manager for Hannapin Marketing. I schedule and coordinate all the webinars and content releases for Hannapin, so I get to work with a lot of awesome people like Richard. Um, so, all right, uh, looks like our poll is done. Let's see the results real quick. Oh man, okay, awesome. 47% um, that work at an agency, um, and just about that, 47% that also are part of an in-house team or do all the marketing plus PPC, and 5% that are consultants. So awesome. Great to have you guys today. All right. Um, without further ado, uh, take it away, Richard. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I know we only have about 20 minutes to go everything, so don't expect the most detailed, but this is for today's agenda. So first thing we'll be looking at is the product feed where we can optimize. The second is the shopping campaigns, and third is some reporting features as well. So right before we start uh, getting into some optimizations, I want to make sure that everyone's aware of what product ads are. So product ads are image-based ads that appear on the right-hand rail on the main line for Bing. Uh, the elements of ads are derived from a feed. So the feed is like the catalyst. So we want to, so just to show an example of an actual product here, you can see it's image-based, right? If you're taking a closer look, you have your title, which is the Brooks Running Shoes, which is a ghost. You have your price, and then you have your store name. So from here, the elements of the feed are seen within the image, within the title, and within the price. Those are all columns within the feed that we're all getting, that we're all creating this product ad from. The Brooks Running, which is the store name, is actually comes from the Bing Merchant Center. So these are what product ads are in a nutshell. So when we're thinking about product ads, well, first thing that we think about are feeds and some of the best practices around here. So some of the best practices that we're going to look at is making sure that your information is accurate, right? You want to make sure that whatever information you're sending us, the price and the availability 
aligns to your actual business, that it's always up to date. Therefore, you want to make sure that your feed it gets uploaded as much as possible, especially during the holidays. So we highly recommend, recommend that you upload your feed daily. Again, images are important because it's all basically image driven. So you want to make sure you use the highest quality of images. Our minimum recommended image size is about 220 by 220, but if you can provide something higher, that's going to work out better for you. And you might want something with a white, with a, a white background that gives it more of a pop effect. And again, make sure you don't have any promotional text within the image. Um, and then looking at your product title, which we'll get into a little bit more in depth, you know, you want to make sure that you put relative terms, you know, relevant terms into your title that people are searching for. So look at your search term report as well for that. And then for the holidays, you want to make sure you get as granular as possible, so targeting at the ID level. <clears throat> and then utilize custom labels. So I know a lot of you, um, keep, you know, I know a lot of advertisers and I know a lot of us who work in this industry have feeds that can be anywhere from thousands to a hundred thousand to a million products. So custom labels are an easier way to start optimizing and targeting out items. So looking at the big merchant center, you can see within the new experience with our BMC here that we have this, we have some graphs that we can show you. So right we have product performance at the bottom, so it gives you clicks and impressions. This is just a test account I'm looking at right now. So you can see that we're giving you some actual performance stats here, but above the product overview, guys, it gives you an idea of what's active, what's expiring, and what's, what items have been rejected. So it kind of gives you a count of what's, what's going on with your product feed, how it's been published, and how it's processed. So this will give you like an actual day-to-day -day overview if you upload your feed daily. So definitely we recommend going into your Bing Merchant Center, checking it daily, especially if you're uploading your feed daily. Now, <clears throat> One thing that most people tend to not look at is the rejection report within your within the Bing Merchant Center. Uh, oftentimes, you do have rejected items, so we highly recommend that you go into your Bing Merchant Center, go to your catalog summary, and look at the published report to see what's actually been published, and then look at the rejected items. So you can see you have your summary report and you have your details report. Summary reports gives you an overall summary of what most of the errors are. The details report gives you by line item detail of each of each product and with the with, associated with the error. And then some of the <clears throat> common pitfalls that we're seeing is missing required fields. So they might be missing an attribute such as, you know, their availability or price, right? The, and the information as well might not be accurate as possible as too. So when we're scraping your page, you know, your availability and price is not accurate as well. Uh, sometimes we have the format within your description and title. You might be using HTML or you might have um, different strings of characters that don't format properly. And then we have editorial flags, such as within the title, you might see something along the lines of a color called gunmetal, so we might flag the word gun. So if you do have any editorial issues, you know, reach out to, you, ads, to, to Bing Ads, and then we'll be able to overturn some of those editorial rejections. So now looking at title, title is king. You want to make sure that within your title, then you include the most information as possible. Make it, make it as robust as possible. So within the title, you want to always include the brand of the product along with your product name, then the product type. So if we're going back to shoes, if we're looking at Nike shoes, right? The Nike is the brand, the product name is Lunar, and then the product type is running shoes, and then you might have men's size 13, black colors. So you want to make sure it's, it's as robust as, pos as possible because when people are searching for products, they, they tend to include some of these actual terms within their search queries. And now custom label. Custom labels is something that we introduced within Bing Shopping. It's really important and I think it's an easy win for the holidays. So looking at custom labels here, it's basically five actual, five labels that you can use. So label zero, if you're looking at my example, you can see that we, put, we basically grouped the Black Friday items. So what you'll do with, within the feed is you'll add custom labels zero through four, right? And then you'll look at items that you deem as Black Friday items or your sale items. And you'll just put the attribute Black Friday in there. And then basically target all those items with that attribute, with that label Black Friday. It's really easy. If you don't have time to break out everything by ID, this will be an easier way to target all your sales items or for your holiday items like Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So this is an easy win and it's easy to implement as well. <clears throat> so now looking at the actual shopping campaigns, optim optimizations and best practices, 
So looking at, you know, you want to bid on your products based on your business goals. Oftentimes I see a lot of people just bidding on all products or by category. I re really recommend that you dig a little bit deeper and getting a little a lot more granular. So the most granular you can get is item ID level. And that is the best practice for certain hot selling items or for this holidays especially. Uh, for negative keywords, you know, start adding negative keywords. Oftentimes I see accounts that don't have negatives in there. It's very important that you add negative keywords in there as well. And then your campaign prior settings. A lot of people kind of just over, this is like an afterthought for prior settings. They just set this up in, when they're creating a campaign. But there's some strategies that you can use around it. And we'll go over some of that stuff as well. And then bidding strategies as well. You want to make sure that, you know, again, you're bidding on the right items and getting as granular as possible. So let's start with the prior settings. So oftentimes you'll see the prior settings when you're starting to create a new campaign. You'll see your low, medium, and high, or if you already create a campaign within Bing Shopping campaigns, you can just go into settings and you can see where your prior settings are. But the strategy around this is like for the holidays is you can actually change your prior settings. So let's say you create a campaign that's just for your Black Friday items and then another campaign for your Cyber Monday items. So a week leading up to those item to those to those holidays, you might want to actually change your prior settings to high and making sure that you're focusing on these items. And then say, setting all your other campaigns that you regularly, that you usually run throughout the year, maybe set them to medium, so that the Black Friday, Cyber Monday items take precedent. So that's, some, that's a little bit of a strategy around the campaign priority settings. <clears throat> and then optimizing at the shopping campaign level, you know, we want to make sure that you target at the ID level. Again, getting as granular as possible. Um, if you're still running regular product ads within Bing, you know, you can see that you can just filter out by ID, and then for Bing Shopping, you can just filter out by ID as well, and it gives you a lot more options as well, and it's a lot easier to look at because you actually have the products within the actual UI. It shows you the product account as well. But again, going down to target ID level is the most important thing that I recommend for the holidays so that you know that you can target on specific items and bid higher on those. And then again, if going if bidding at the ID level is too much work, then you might want to use the custom labels. And custom labels is an easy one in my opinion. So this does take a little bit of work, but it's going back to the feed. You know, maybe you just have to do a V lookup against your Black Friday items or uh, Cyber Monday items, and then just use adding a custom label and labeling it. So then again, looking at here, you have your campaign for Bluetooth speakers, and then you have your ad groups. You know, you have your custom label too, so you for your campaign that you, you're, you're utilizing and you're saying for Cyber Monday, and then custom label three for Black Friday for campaign for your other campaign. Again, those are just targeting all those items that are deemed for Black Friday and Cyber Monday. You know, it's rather than spending the time breaking out things, this is an easy win as well for grouping things. So definitely recommend using custom labels. Another thing that we want to hop into is uh, shopping campaign reports. So the dimensions tab is very important. Um, definitely look at the dimensions tab um, and look at the shopping ID level because oftentimes when I do see people who are running the all products, you know, they're just running all products. They're not really optimizing. And you know, you really don't know what the levers are and you really can't control what items are doing well and what items aren't. So with this dimensions tab now within Bing Shopping, you have that visibility to make, to make changes at the item ID level. So where to go within the, within, the, within the UI to look at the dimensions tab is when you go into your campaign, go to dimensions, right? And then you, on the left-hand side, you have your tab, your drop-down. You have five options. Again, you have your category, product type, brand, item ID, and store ID. But like I said, item ID is the most granular thing you want to use to target. So definitely look at item ID, right? And then you can just filter out. You can also export this dimensions the dimensions report, and then just filter out by you know clicks or impressions or your even your if you have conversion tracking, you can just filter by conversion, and you can even put in your CPA goals is there. Do some formulas as well. And this is an example of the actual um, dimensions tab shopping ID report. So you have your merchant ID product ID, you have your impressions and your clicks, and you have all your your your, necess your, your necessary KPIs. So definitely use this for the holidays and leading up to the holidays. And uh, and one thing that I do want to say is that for a lot of advertisers that haven't really tried um, 
Bing Shopping, but you're running on Google Shopping, it's a real easy um, way to transition over to Bing. The, the main thing that you want to do is make sure that if you are planning to switch over to Bing Shopping, that you're using the same Google feed, that you're using the Google feed and you're importing that feed directly into the Bing Merchant Center. And within that, if you're using any third-party tracking, make sure that you're tracking towards Bing. Okay. And once you've actually imported that feed over to Bing Merchant Center, you can easily import your campaigns from Google Shopping to Bing Shopping. So within the UI, under Import Campaigns, you can just import from Google AdWords. Right? I don't have a more of a descriptive actual um, layout of how this actually works because you actually need to sign into your Google account. So once you hit Import from Google AdWords, you'll just sign into your Google account. And from there, you'll have a bunch of options. You can import all your campaigns. So you'll select all your AdWords campaigns for shopping. And then I'll give you a list of, you know, if you want to import the negatives, if you want to import any destination URLs. So you can choose all the options that are relevant. And then what, you can just hit the import options. And then import your shopping campaigns into Bing, into Bing Shopping. But again, make sure that you're using the same feed from Google Shopping but make sure that your tracking parameters are switched to, to track for Bing as well. So what's ahead for Bing Shopping? So uh, Bing Shopping, you know, it's been around, it's launched in July roughly, and then, you know, we are picking up a lot of steam. A lot of advertisers seem, seem to be happy with it. You know, we're coding towards a lot of the tool providers as well. So some of the tool providers will be ready by end of this year and into early next year. But, you know, shopping is evolving as we've seen. So a few things that we want to talk about is with Bing Shopping campaigns, we, we, we also launch remarketing. So if you're using remarketing, you can use your Bing Shopping campaigns as well. And you can start building out your audience list from there. And then with Bing Shopping, we launch internationally. Right now we are serving in UK and Australia and we do have other target markets and target countries outside of the US and UK and Australia that we are planning to launch soon. So one of the ones, one of the other international countries that we're trying to launch is France. And then in the coming months, two years, we'll be launching in um, maybe in Canada, India, and in Germany. But then we have our share of voice reporting that's coming soon. So then you'll be able to download a report where you'll be able to look at benchmark CTR, CPC, and your impression share loss as well. So share of voice will be coming within the few within a few weeks. So right in time for the holidays. And then Mobile product ads are fully serving, so definitely go into your settings and look into your devices and use your bid modifiers to look at, you know, where you're serving them, how much percentage that you're set for mobile. You know, right now it's defaults at zero, so then you're just serving at the regular bid for everything else. So definitely play around with your uh, bid, your bid modifiers for mobile. And one thing I did want to point out, you know, another th one attribute that I think is important within the feed that I didn't actually point out here is the sale price column and the sale effective date column. So when you're looking at um, for the holidays, you can well you can also add in those two columns, and you can put in the sale price along with the effective date, the start date, and end date. So that's another way that you can optimize as well. So for the Black Friday, you'll you'll deem those products with the sale price and when to start the price sale and when to end the sale. So definitely take a look at that as well. And some quick resources for you guys to look at and for us to stay in touch is, you know, definitely visit the Bing Ads blog where you have more up-to-date information on what's roaming out and what's new and available. And then if you need help with starting with Bing Shopping, you know, here's a link to your Bing Shopping setup. It gives you everything from start to end, from Bing Merchant Center all the way to reporting. And if you always and if you have any questions and if you're aligned to an account manager, please reach out to them as well and they should be able to help you. And that's about it, Jamie. Wow, great presentation, Richard. Thank you. Um, that's yeah. things, uh, uh, upcoming things are pretty exciting. I'm sure our, our UK and Australia friends are uh, jumping for joy. And um, <laughs> France and, and India and whatnot, that, that's great. Um, things really, uh, really getting out there. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, we're trying. Um, definitely want to be more competitive in those markets as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, well, we have just a, a couple of questions for you, Richard. Um, okay. One is, when will Bing Shopping campaigns be supported in the editor? Um, that's going to be sometime next year. Or, um, so we're looking to launch it in FY16, hopefully within the first quarter. Okay, 
Great. Um, and see, she, the same question. Also, dimensions report does not have bid. Is that column going to be added? Um, no, that's a column that we can definitely take into account and we can add in that in. That's good feedback if you don't have the bid in there. Um, that's something, let me check on that and get back to you. So okay. I can post it. Yeah, if you want, you can just tweet me at uh, our park data feed and let me get back to you on that. Perfect. Um, okay, and this is from David. When will you offer an option for a promotional offer, such as a coupon? <laughs> um, we are we are actively working on that as well. Um, I'm first of all, David. I'm sorry that I don't have exact dates for you, but we are working on actually testing out promotional messaging, and such as such as what Google does in their merchant promotions. We're, we're going to be actively testing that as well soon. I don't have an actual rollout date for that, but we are working on that, and that is in the horizon. Great. Um, and then we have uh, just one last question, and I'm not sure yep. if you're going to be able to answer this. It might be a little too specific, but this is from Jennifer. She said, I wasn't yep. able to import to the product ID level from Google. Did I do something wrong? Um, if you weren't, you weren't able to import from the product ID level, so we're, I guess the main question is, was she importing her Google Shopping campaigns from to Bing Shopping? Just... Make sure that the feed is exactly the same um, with the Google Shopping feed. So that's number one. Uh, make sure the header columns are the same. So you want to make sure that you might be targeting Google might you might be targeting different header columns. So I know Google uses um, MPI or item ID, and then they use SKU and GTIN and everything. So make sure you're, it's targeting at the right ID level. Uh, so you know that's something that you can also tweet at me and we can take a look at it. we can um, I also put in an ad support I mean our support ticket for that so okay. I don't have a definite answer it's okay. really it could be anything yeah that's it's a little hard with that looking at the actual yeah answer. I think those were really good suggestions and Jennifer I hope you can um, take some um, some of those ideas well it will help you get that fixed all right that is all the time that we have for today um, if you guys do have any feedback for the webinar, you have more questions, um, you can tweet um, Richard at our park data feed, or um, if you want to email Hannapin at marketing at hannapin.com. All right, thank you everybody for joining us today, and uh, have a great rest of your day. See you later. Thanks, Richard. Thank you.